To be the man, you gotta beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cut this shot. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels Podcast. My name is Jacob Best of the Realm Otter. I am Brian, Brian Man Peacock. We have a very pretty exciting podcast to talk about. I mean, half the pay-per-views were exciting. Half of them. You know, the big production one and then the good the exciting one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this week we are going to talk about Backlash. We're going to talk about, we're going to briefly talk about Backlash. Then we're going to talk about the real show, NXT TakeOver Chicago. This seems to be a reoccurring theme. Yeah, but this one was really drastic. Yes. There well, were let's no, go ahead and get into it. There were no grandmothers in the NXT ring. <laughs> but that was the, the highlight of Backlash. Think so, about what you just said. The grandmother was the highlight of Backlash. No, I, I realize what I said. <clears throat> okay. I know, I know it's insane. I just want the listeners to... That's what we said. Well, we okay. See, this is why we need to start at the beginning. I say that we did have Shinsuke versus Dolph Ziggler. Which was a solid match. Should have not been at the beginning. But yeah, that was a little that's weird. Right. Yeah. I, I, I guess there was definitely better matches to open the show with. Yeah. But I think they just really wanted to get Shinsuke to debut. It's just it was like they had a, a money burning hole in their pocket. They just needed him to debut. Yeah, but why not put him on? Well, I would say. I don't even remember what the main event. Was. Really? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Why not put him on right before that? Yeah, that would have made more sense. It would have made it seem more important. Yeah, but with him opening the show, I mean, surprised it wasn't on the kickoff show at that point. Yeah. Well, we don't. Did we? Even, I don't think we watched the kickoff. We didn't. It was Ty Dillinger and Eve English, which yeah. I'm sure was a good match. Probably. But they, they've already only had good matches. Yeah. And I saw somewhere. I don't know if it's true. But Aiden English is married to Eddie Guerrero's daughter? Yes. Is that true? Shaw Guerrero? I have no idea. I just saw it on She's Facebook. gorgeous. That's all I know. She okay. used to be part of NXT. And she, she left. Yeah, she left for some reason. Huh. They also they also took away her Guerrero name. Oh, then yeah. It was <laughs> like the most bizarre thing in the world to me. They also took away um, Kurt, or not Kurt Henning, his son. And his last name isn't Henning, so... Right. They well, just hate their heritage for some reason. I don't get it. I mean, I can get it under certain names. Like Bray like, Wyatt. What was, uh... Uh, IRS, um... I forget what it... Yeah, I forget what it stood for. Just, well, it just stands for IRS. No, his name was... Uh, wasn't old, it, like, Urtunda? Oh, okay. Oh, Urban or Shyster. That's yeah. right. You're right. Okay. Yeah, his real last name was Rotunda. Okay. I mean, Bray's well, already a Rotund guy, so that'd probably be a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah, but I mean, Bo Dallas yeah. could have taken the name. But did he wrestle under Rotunda? No, he wrestled under IRS as far as I know. Okay, yeah. Unless he wrestled before that as something. He probably did. Bray Shyster. <laughs> Bo Shyster. I could, I could go with Bo Shyster. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe Bo should have embraced it. Yeah. Not like he's doing much right now. No. Which is really unfortunate because he's really good. Is he still employed with them? No, yeah. he didn't let go, has he? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Shinsuke and Dolph. Yeah. So I don't know we started talking Not about Dallas. <laughs> I thought it was a really great match. Um, told a good story of Ziggler just being a jerk. And Nakamura got the win. Yeah. As he should. Yeah, that wasn't surprising at all. Now, I also read that they're wanting Nakamura to be the new John Cena. That would be great, but I think the accent he has. Yeah. Which, I don't know if, if that's his real accent or not. From what I understand, he speaks much better English than what they're letting on. And he also has that stupid mouthpiece all the time. Yeah, that which I love. I love when he does that. And the character, yes. But yeah. for interviews, maybe take it out. I, yeah, but... 
I don't I don't know. I kind of like it for some reason. I don't know because I kind of hate it, but I think I kind of like it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, as the new seaman, sure. But I don't see it happening. Probably not. It's probably too good to be the new Cena. <laughs> Cena, I mean, we found out recently, Cena's really damn good. He just needs a right opponent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cena also, he has the giant personality. Right. He but, has the it factor. Yeah, I mean, Nakamura has it, but it's yeah. not like... I mean, it's for a different country. Yeah, he's great in Japan. Yeah. Uh, but just going back to his accent real quick, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen any interviews with him, and he didn't have it. But I, I came across some interview with Asuka, like some sort of shoot interview or something. I forget what it was. Right. She spoke better English than I'm doing right now. Huh. Like on, on NXT, she's got that real... She's got the accent, the broken English. Yeah. But in uh, unless it was a dream, if it could have been, I don't know. I'll just try to find it. But yeah, like perfect English. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to look that up because I want to see if I trust it or not. Yeah, you're a little bit fucked up today because you just found out Sinbad wasn't Shazam. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what. The Monopoly Man didn't have a monocle. What the you. hell is going on? My my world is just turned upside down today. So, uh, also, um, did you know Law and Order doesn't exist? Actually, the Fashion Files. I think dun, da da da. I love, I love, I'm loving the fashion police thing. I wasn't a big fan at first. It was kind of funny. These fucking fashion files are the best. The one in London was hilarious. Yeah. When, uh, Fandango said cheerio. And, yeah. Uh, now I already had my breakfast. Yeah, now I already have my breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's in the whole wee, wee. <laughs> yeah. I Speaking of which, have you seen that, that, Po- uh, that uh, Pokemon Center meme? No. It's someone coming in to get their, uh, to the Pokemon Center, getting their uh, Pokemon healed up, and then the picture underneath, uh, uh, it's, well, Nurse Joy says, okay, we'll call the ambulance. And underneath, it's a picture of the ambulance with the Wii U logo all over it. Wii U. Wow. U. <laughs> I laughed pretty hard at that one. Jeez. But back to the wrestling. So... Fandango, I think, was confused as to where Tyler was. He was talking to a janitor, and it turns out yeah. it was Tyler uh, undercover. I it had me fooled. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, fashion police come out, and it is the janitor and Fandango. And that's actually how Tyler wrestled. And I, I showed Mostly. the gift. Yeah, I showed the gift to Kim last night of him, uh, like, tripping the, the, one of the Usos. Yeah, oh, God, that was great. And that's a foreign object. You shouldn't be allowed to use that. Uh, he even like mopped him with it. You know. You know what? All I got to say about that part of the match though was too sweet. Too sweet. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, I. I feel like the fashion police are like the creative doesn't care about us. <laughs> yeah. Like you, I wonder did he show up to like Gorilla? Like did he change and then show up to Gorilla like five seconds before and they're just like. You like uh, go out, go! Like yeah. your music's on. What are you doing? <laughs> he just didn't give a fuck. I don't know. It was fun though. I greatly enjoyed it. And then and I, I, I don't understand the costume change. I don't know. I'm but okay I can appreciate it, it. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up as a grandma. Yeah. He even flashed one of the Usos. That was funny. I expected a third. I really did. Yeah. But, uh, Maybe that would have gotten them the win. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they needed. They need a third costume change. <laughs> yeah, I... We've talked about this before. I don't like the Usos as champions. I don't like the Usos' new shtick. I don't know if you do. No, it's kind of boring and lame. Yeah. Like, it's been done fairly recently. And it's better. Better. It's not creative at all. Day one is H. Day one is H, yeah. <laughs> I mean is here you know as long as we have the fashion police to call them out on their dumb bullshit i'm okay with them continuing <laughs> the gimmick yeah but it's gotta change it's bad day one is h 
Who knew Tyler Breeze was so damn funny? I I mean the gimmick when we first saw him, I mean, he was really funny anyway. Yeah. The whole male model thing. And, I don't know. I really, really, really want them to push Tyler Breeze. I've been a fan for a long time. Yeah. Pretty much ever since I saw him. Yeah. He I even... Been, uh, wait. Did I beat you? What? In 2K16 with Tyler? Oh, uh, I don't think I won any of them. No, I didn't win any of them. Right? Okay. Ooh, it was Tyler Breeze versus Cesaro, which is an excellent match. Yeah. But uh, that's up on the YouTube channel, uh, Best of the Realm. We got a bunch of videos up there now with WWE 2K16, Killer Instinct, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Yeah. Did a bunch of Let's Plays. A lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. Hopefully we're going to do more. Hopefully. Up to you. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it again. See how it goes. Um, which, by the way, you know how we were worried about how the videos were going to get hit for the entrance music? Yeah. Those videos are good. No copyrights. Also, Marvel vs. Capcom... <laughs> Good chunk of it I can't monetize. Really? Actually, the whole thing I can't monetize because of it. Oh, damn. So, uh, I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> like, oh, that's the one we weren't worried about. Great. <laughs> uh, anyways, I really hope we see more fashion police. Yeah. And they just make the gimmick stronger and they end up as champions. Yeah. And I think they, they're both really good. Other than the goofy-ass gimmick stuff... Like, Fandango and Tyler Breeze deliver. They're really good. Yeah. Especially Tyler Breeze. I don't... I haven't seen Fandango. He's, he's had good matches. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's not bad. He's not boring. So... No? He's not at all? I mean, yeah. I mean, they could... I'm su kind of surprised they didn't win, actually. But I think uh. the company is really, really high on the Usos right now. Yeah. They have been for a long time. It's the whole Samoan thing. WWE really likes their Samoans. I mean, me too. But, yeah, I like Moana. <laughs> and Samoa Joe. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's been a Samoan wrestler I haven't liked. I, I mean, think. you're only saying that because he's here. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't actually he's not in this room with us. This is gonna be terrible. Whoa, podcast. what? We left him in the living room. Oh no! Roman! Roman, get in here! Roman buddy! Sorry. <laughs> You're missing the podcast. You're such an integral part of it. <laughs> you know, I don't even not like Roman. Yeah, I and mean, we've had that we've beat yeah. that discussion to death yeah. that we're both Roman fans. We just don't like what WWE does with him. We just want him to be better. You can do it. He can. I really think he can. He's listening because they listen. You can do it, Roman. Well, he can hear us. He's in the other room. Yeah. Roman, you can do it, buddy. You got it. You got this. And then the next match was uh, Sami Zayn beating Baron Corbin clean. Yeah. Which was a, a really solid match. Yeah, it was good. But I'm glad Sami won because I think I thought Baron was going to be the winner because they're really pushing him. Yeah, I hope this feud just continues. When he hit the deep six, I was afraid. Yeah, I love that. Sammy, no. But what yeah. did what did Sammy win with? Do you remember? The uh, Aluma kick, Aluva, Aluva kick. Yeah. Not the. I still love the. All those other moves. Oh, like the brain bust. Ah! If he if they ever let him do it, I hope they don't. I hope. He wants to bring back El Generico and they let him do it. Yeah. Could El Generico It, has, it has to be really obvious that it's Sammy. <laughs> it would. It would, yeah. Uh, but would, do you think El Generico could thrive in WWE right now? What if, like, Kevin Owens drops him on his head or something? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know if I'd want that. I think I would want, like, a legit... Like, you don't know. No, I think I would legitimately want an El Generico. This is the problem, though. There's two problems. He's either A, in Tijuana, taking care of the infants. Right. Or Kevin Owens did say that he's dead. He, yeah. So it's one of those two, and he's in Mexico, so he might be dead. He drank the water. That, too. Yeah. But it's still. not likely we're going to get... Okay, but Roseanne is coming back to TV. He, that is true. 
And her husband's still going to be alive, so I don't want to hear about it. Oh, yeah, how's that going to work? They're going to ignore it. I saw an article today. John Goodman is going to be in the damn show. I don't know how we got off of that conversation. <laughs> no, because a character can die and come back. Yeah, fair enough. If they've been dead long enough. So uh, then we had the welcoming committee versus Charlotte. No, it's, wait. The welcoming committee is Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella. Yeah. Versus Royal Fire Glow. And uh, the welcoming committee won. And then we had Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. That match was really good. So. Yeah. Solid match. Yeah. Weird finish. Um, AJ got his feet stuck in the, the announce table. I like that. The weird finish, because it's like... I mean, the the commentator won with an ankle lock. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But, um... It's like... It, it was kind of a shit finish, but it also makes me want them to have another match. It obviously leads into another match. Yeah. That's a SmackDown finish. Like, that finish needs to have been on SmackDown. Not oh, match. I understand. Okay. I thought you meant like that's normal for their brand. I was like, is no, it? No, no, no. It just needs that. Like that's a show. That's just a like show. the freaking welcoming committee versus the other ones. That should have been on SmackDown. Yeah, that's why we're not talking about it. Cause you fuck that match. It should have yeah. been a championship match. Yep. Um. Then we had Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, which I didn't realize was happening. I'm fine with it happening. It was an okay match. Yeah, it was pretty good. I think those two could do a lot better. Probably. Because as a tag team, they were fantastic. I saw a picture today, and it's complete, uh, it was complete like fan fiction, but it showed uh, Rowan, someone else who I wasn't sure uh, who it actually was, someone on SmackDown, mm -hmm. and then um, The Ascension. And they all had, like, and they call it, like, uh, the carnival or something. Okay. And, uh, because it showed, uh, Rowan with the, like, the clown painted sheet right. mask. And then the Ascension had a little bit more colorful, uh, face paint. And the other guy had face paint. I can't, I don't know who it was. But, and they called it the carnival. So, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Well, I think... Uh, uh, was it, oh, was it Crazy Steve is coming up to the NXT from TNA, which he's a clown guy. I don't know if he'll keep the clown gimmick. Right. Yeah, they could do a carnival thing. Yeah, they haven't had that since the oddities, I think. And even that was like a sideshow. Yeah. I used to love that theme song. Oh, Yeah. I can't remember how it goes right off the top of my head. It was ICP. Was it really? Yes, it was. Pretty sure. I I would I would put two dollars on it. I like an ICP song. Yeah, busted. You're juggling now. Oh no, no! I want to see that. I want. Yeah, you're juggling now. I want to see the Cole Cabana Juggalo documentary he did. I want to say I've seen it. I didn't know he did one, but I would love to watch it. I've <laughs> seen stuff. I can appreciate that crowd a little bit because they get real into it. Yeah. Like, the Cole Cabana does, like, a police officer character. Off like, isn't he Officer Buzzkill? Or uh, Buzz Killington or something no. like that? No. Might just be Officer Cabana or something. Really? I don't... He wasn't in my JCW videos. I okay. Well, this is slightly more recent, like the last year or so. Oh, mine were old as hell. Okay. But, um, yeah, they were, like, throwing shit at them, like water bottles. Yeah. Hopefully nothing too extreme, but they got that. real into the gimmick of, like, hating him. Yeah. You sure he wasn't Officer Buzzkill? 99% sure. I'm gonna Google that. Okay. And while you do that, we'll just briefly go over, uh, Jinder Mahal's new WWE champion. Yep. Couldn't care less. It's not coming. Pretty much, yeah. This was like the opposite of a swerve. Yeah. It was a straight ahead. Yep. <laughs> um, Jinder's not bad, but he's just also not that great. Yeah. He, I mean, he's pretty pretty generic, which seems to be kind of what they were going for for that title. 
you could really easily replace gender with Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, uh, freaking Tyler Breeze, so many other people, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin. There's plenty of talent on that show to make a main eventer out of. Oh, and they dug real fucking deep and went after Jinder Mahal. Yeah, and I think we talked about this on the last one, their India push. Yes. That's obviously what it is. I feel like they could have still picked somebody better. Sanjay Dutt. Damn, Sanjay Dutt. Think yes. They were going to bring in somebody to push, you know, the face of India. Why wasn't it Sanjay Dutt? I guess Sanjay Dutt is sort of prone to injury from what I understand. I think he's in TNA as well. So, yeah. No, sorry, he's in Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem featuring Global Force Wrestling. Oh yeah, I was, gonna, I was hoping you'd add on that last little bit. See, I think he's over there, but I don't know that any of those guys have actual contracts. Considering yeah. they can't really afford anybody past a day-by-day basis. Yeah. And, uh... Why would he not... I'm sure we could pay Sanjay Dutt to come to jump ship. We could? Yeah, we could pay Sanjay Dutt to be on our show. I don't know about that. Probably. <laughs> that seems like a stretch. No, uh, it is. Yeah, I just... I, there's got to be better Indian talent. The Great Kali! Apparently was world heavyweight champion, yeah. not WWE champion. It's the same damn thing. I'm just kidding about the Great Cully. <laughs> I don't think he can wrestle anymore. Probably not. He's the older guy. What? I don't know if it's true. Just from what <laughs> you I put it out there. I say I say it all the time. I read it, so it must be true. Okay. He was uh when he was in wrestling school, he like uh had someone up with a fireman's carry and did that big press move he would do. Right. And dropped him. And I guess it was like a little guy or something and like crushed his rib cage and he died. I don't know. Ugh. It's in one of my books, actually. Jeez. So. Well, you read it, it must be true. Yeah, it must be true. So, yeah, there's. I just. I mean, India's pretty popular with wrestling. I think there are a couple of big promotions over there. I just don't care about gender. The best part of that match, though, was Randy Orton tossing one of the Singh brothers up in the air. He landed on oh. his head on the announce table. I think I've posted that on my Facebook like four times already. Do you think Randy knew that camera was there? I don't know. Cause <laughs> he, no, I don't. Because he turned around making the... Yeah. And face. I think he, like... And then he saw the camera and started grabbing his arm. Yeah, but also, like, I think he just continued that reaction yeah. because the camera was there. You're like... Oh, I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up again. <laughs> <laughs> it was a double fuck up. Yeah. Oh, I'm fucked. But yeah, that was that was my favorite part. That was the best part. I hope the yeah. guy's okay. I think he's okay because he took bumps after that. Yeah. Like it looked like Randy literally went back behind the table. He did. And was like, you okay, bud? <laughs> I think he did. He probably did. Like, I bet you that was not, the, the next spot was the uh, double spike DDT. Yeah. That was probably not the next spot. He probably just had to go check on the other guy and was like, I don't know, let's go ahead and do that spot. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, I mean, it was funny. <laughs> Randy went back and went, you dead, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a toss, bro. He's like, I heard you dive. Oh, God, yeah, we'll, we're going to we'll get to that, I guess. But, um, yeah, I guess everyone's complaining that Jinder Mahal is super steroided up. He's real fucking built. I don't know that he looks like he's on steroids, though. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yeah. You, you didn't see his back? <laughs> like, neck the dots on his back. <laughs> I mean, it's bad. Really bad. I guess I also look at guys like Lesnar who look like that. And Brock has that farm boy strength. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think they throw hay bales in India. Like, <laughs> no, but he, like, he has been like Poor mega cow. dedicated to working out for a long time. It, he, he definitely, like, the veins and the, it's just, it's very, very roid looking. I guess I just, to me, I give the benefit of the doubt because he is a guy that, 
much as I'm shitting on him being champion, he is a guy that works real hard. He is a good worker. He has a decent personality. He is a good heel. You know what I hate about him? And I just realized that I hate this about him. What? He just keeps saying the same thing. Yes. He's like that one guy in the XFL. He hates me. <laughs> he just gets on the mic. He's like, you hate me because of the way I look. You hate me because of the way I talk. He talks better than most people on the show. And he's like, you hate me because I'm rich. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah you're richer than all of us. Of it's true. It's just like, and then he gets on next week. You hate me because of the way I look. It's like, guy, yeah, we've been over this. Yeah, most he, of us don't care. He <laughs> needs not to hang out you. with like Kevin Owens. <sighs> yeah. Which, and like, <clears throat> go ahead. Go, oh, what were you saying? Go ahead. Do, oh, I'm gonna transition to something else. Oh, uh, hanging out with uh, Kevin Owens. Like, you you just watched the Finn Balor documentary. Yes, I just watched it. There is that like group of people that hang out together. And I we're all real good talkers. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if Jenner would just fit in there. Like he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. But we, I mean, we could be way the fuck off. Well, we totally could be, but he also has to make like that effort to be a better talker. Yeah, I don't know that he's ever needed to be. No, because he threw a beer at the football player guy, and that's when it all kind of started. What? Uh, Gronkowski. Oh, he did do that, didn't he? Okay. And that's kind of like when he pu- got the push, and then like a week and a half later, he's WWE champion. Yeah, it's true. Like, that was the first time he ever, like... Well, the, the other big time that he was not a top guy, but he was prominent was uh, three-man band with uh, Drew McIntyre and Heath Slater, which I think... If I remember correctly, Heath did most of the talking. But that was, they were like, they were a good tag team. Did he play bass? I don't know. Why would he play bass? Uh, Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were going to make some kind of Indian joke or something. No, I play bass. Okay. He's usually the quieter ones that play bass. I think they were all singers. Oh, oh. (laughs) Kind of like, oh, what were they called in WCW? I don't know. It was Gregory Helms, Shannon Moore, and another guy. They were like a boy band. Really? He yeah. just named two incredible wrestlers. Yeah. And I think the other guy was really good, too. I can't remember what they were called. Did you find Cole Cabana's officer character? It, it is. You were right. Officer Cole Cabana. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking at his ring name. It's Matt Classic. I was about to ask if you remember Matt Classic. Of course. But, uh, oh, this is probably his J- his other JCW name, Officer Jack Hofferson. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that screams JCW. Yeah, it does. But uh, so <laughs> the third, this really there's only three highlights: the the janitor, the Singh brother getting murdered, and talking smack Kevin Owens. Oh, that was better than all of all of Backlash together. So most of Backlash consisted of the both of us just kind of watching. Yeah, and it was like, all right, well, next yeah. thing. I get that up and go. Kevin Owens interview. We both winged in. Yeah, we were both <laughs> at, at attention. Let me and, tell you something. That's what I realized is a good wrestling match because that was, and we're gonna. I'm just briefly gonna go over this. We're watching it. I, I was watching NXT. And we watched that one separately. It went from me being like, oh, that was a good match, to I leaned in, and I was invested for the rest of that show. Yeah. When you lean in, that's when you know it's good. I did not lean in once during the pay-per-view last night. Oh, they were called Three Count in WCW, by the way. So, yeah, they're called Three Count? Yeah, and the other guy was Evan Courageous. I don't know that name. And it looks like Tank Abbott was part of it. Probably. I know that name. Why do I know I that name? I think he's a uh, UFC fighter. Yeah, he is. He is totally a UFC fighter. Yeah, he was. He must have been like their manager or something, because he's old as hell. Huh. 
25 wins, 10 losses, 6 for knockout. But that Kevin Owens uh, interview with uh, Renee Young and Peter Rosenberg. Yeah, uncomfortable. Kept telling Peter Rosenberg to shut up. Oh, so good. He left. Oh, oh he's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> that was so funny. I Renee s- Young and Kevin Owens are a great combination. Is Renee Young married or seeing Dean Ambrose? Yes. Okay. I don't know about married, but they are okay. definitely a couple. Because I saw someone saying, do you think Dean Ambrose gets mad when someone talks to Renee Young that way? If he does, he's an idiot. Yeah, I was like, no way. Yeah, but yeah, I saw a lot of people that were like, that was a very uncomfortable interview. And people were like, oh my god, <clears throat> Kevin Owens is such a dick. It's like, yeah, he is. Oh, you're new to wrestling. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it was, oh my god, it was so good. It's the kind of thing he's good at. And yeah. he just let let him reign like that. Yeah, just let him, let him talk. He even, like, it got to the point where he was like, you guys suck at this, I'm good at this. I'm closing the show. Yeah. The and then he thing. actually closed the show. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like he was talking to me. And he's yeah. like, I'm yours. I'm your new face of America. Which like, is a baby is face mine. thing. <laughs> but he's like, I'm yours. I'm representing yeah. you. But at the same time, he's like, you're Canadian, you asshole. <laughs> Which is what makes it so funny. Yeah. And what makes him a heel. It's like, no, oh, no, you're not allowed to be. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> oh. But, I oh, God, go watch that interview on Talking Smack. Yeah. So uh, good. The rest of it was okay, I guess. Yeah, no, Talking Smack's usually good. Renee Young is really good. And we didn't plan on watching that. No. <laughs> not at all. Well, we, I mean, we were just <laughs> hanging out well, before I left, and then yeah. Kevin Owens came on. And we were like, whoa, what? Which started with them talking, and all of a sudden it's like, they told me not to, to, to come on the show until Renee introduced me, but I like interrupting you guys. <laughs> oh, oh my it's god. Such an ass. It's amazing. It was hilarious. Speaking of asses, uh, Randy Orton is considered to be a pretty big jerk right now. Oh, I'm so glad you went that way. I was, so I was scared. Yeah, we weren't going to talk about that whole adult thing. <laughs> You'll never know now. So, uh, Randy Orton tweeted out something that I think is truthful, and that's why people are mad. And you don't know anything about this, right? I know a little bit. You know people are mad? I know people are mad. I know people are making fun of it. I know people don't care. So what did he say? I know people are making t-shirts. He said, and I'm going to quote here, every indie match now. Handshake, drawn out move exchange, this is awesome chant, strike exchange, dive, no sell indie strong style, dive, more strikes, no sells, dive, flippy floppy sequence, dive, hit everyone with each other's finisher, then humpy dumpty we all fall down, fight forever chance, rinse and repeat until every move is useless and means nothing, dive, take unsafe shot that looks like shit, and hurt like hell then roll up finish, handshake and hug after match. Everyone's hands raised. All these guys chant. Go home and type on social media thanking your opponents and company for the match and telling other guys they should book these guys. Dive. Dive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now he has He's not wrong! Um, no, I don't... He's not 100% wrong. Um, might be on to something. He, I think he's right. I think people are mad. Yeah, but you know what? That uh, that equation works on me. Yeah, no, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I mean, the the problem yeah. is he described NXT, which I think might be uh, a thing that gets in heat. No, I don't think he described NXT. He he described that UK match, and, and like. Did he? A little bit. Uh, I feel no. like he did. If you came out. We're gonna get back. We're gonna get to that. Um, were there a lot of dives? Maybe not dives. Cause that's the big thing. Yeah. Cause now there's t-shirts immediately. That's awesome. I thought I thought it was a Will Osprey thing because he was right. the guy wearing the shirts I saw. It was you can get a shirt that says Dive Guy or not a Dive Guy. <laughs> so. 
Guess I'm not a dive guy. I get a dive guy shirt. Which now, okay, they they can definitely be overdone, and they are overdone. Yeah, we experienced that firsthand. But yes, but does the crowd pop like a motherfucker every single time? Yeah, but you also get guys like Sami Zayn, where for me it's like, hey, you can stop doing that, Sami. Your dive's kind of cool. Yeah, it doesn't have to be done all the time. It, it, are they overdone? Of course they're overdone. Yeah. Is everything overdone right now? Yeah, everything's overdone right now because we're just inundated with pro wrestling. Like, for me to keep, keep up with wrestling right now and all the stuff I like, like, my entire weekends are almost spent just watching wrestling because I don't get to watch yeah. it during the week. So, like, my Friday to Sunday is, like, frantic trying to watch everything. Right. Now, here's the other thing where I also stand with Randy on this. WWE gets blamed a lot for being a very formula-like wrestling. You point this out, so is indie wrestling. Yeah, so because it's like just a, a different formula. Yeah, but like I said, it works. It works to, to it works for both guys, for both companies. Yeah, and as long as it's working, and then change it up a little bit now and then. So is it okay for the indie guys to shit on WWE, but since WWE is bigger, it's not okay to shit on the indie guys? Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's not okay. Um, I guess it's just one of those things where it's like it's Orton's opinion. Yeah. And fuck off if you don't like it. Uh, I, but once again, not all indie matches are like that. Right. And not all WWE matches are like their formula. Right. And that's when you get the really good stuff. Because if you like the WWE formula, then great. You love it. If you like the indie formula with the flip-flops and the chants and the... Right. Uh, flippity floppity sequence. Yeah, the flippity floppity spot is. I also feel like Randy was trying to be kind of funny. Yeah, because that's funny. Like, I that is it funny. funny. It's, like you said, mostly funny because it's true. Yeah. And you can't really get mad at it. There is some truth in every joke. Yeah. You could just make t shirts and make money off of it. Like, yeah. Like he did do, and someone did. And there's a little more to this. Uh, Bubba Ray posted a picture of him diving onto a bunch of guys. <laughs> okay, I was going to bring that up. Too. Yeah, it just said dive. Randy said, lol, there's a difference between a young, hungry talent diving and an old, out-of-shape vet falling. <laughs> 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 oh, that Touché, is good. Randy. Touché. That is good. Those guys got to know each other, right? Randy oh. and Bubba? Yeah, I'm sure. And, like... Um, Maybe that should have been a DM. No, we <laughs> need to see that. Um, speaking of dives, though, isn't it really impressive? Like, Bubba diving? Whoa. Sure. He also dived in the ring, though. He didn't dive out. Okay. Um, but Hanson and Rogue. Yeah. Diving to the outside. Do they do that? Yeah. That's Hanson funny. does it all the fucking oh, time. Because I was like, wait. Because I was watching War of the Worlds this weekend. And I was, and this was after, like I said, I didn't know the whole tweet, but I knew the dive thing was a thing at the time. And I was like, wait, War, uh, War Machine hasn't did any dives yet. Sure enough, as soon as I thought that, boom, That's Hanson's awesome. diving out the ring. I'm like, oh my god! So He's Bubba like, oh. tweeted at Randy, my tweet has zero to do with you. Looks like you were wrong again. You're still awesome. Falling is greater than House of Horrors. Ha. First of all, Fuck you, Bubba. You were targeting Randy. There's was, no way that tweet had nothing to do with Randy's. Yeah. Like, just fucking own it. I, that, that is a little surprising. I, was, I wasn't talking about you. Like, <laughs> what, well, what the fuck? I, I, now, there is there is a slight chance he may not have known about the original tweet. I didn't know about the original tweet. Everyone sure. was talking about that. Maybe he just knew about the joke. Yeah. They like, the t like I said, there's t-shirts now. I don't know. I feel like this is that situation where you walk into a room and somebody's like, fuck that Brian Peacock guy. And you're like, what? Oh, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> like, Wait a minute. Yeah. No, asshole, you were talking about me. Oh, that, that's very possible. Uh, I mean, that probably happens more than I even know. But. I mean, you are an asshole. <laughs> I am. Uh, so Randy, unfortunately, tweeted out a apology. I hate apologies. Yeah. He said, sorry to the indie marks. 
Well, kind of a shitty okay, apology so right it's off not the bat. Apology, gotcha. Indie guys and old timers who do dives took offense. Just having a good time over a few drinks in Denmark, closing the SmackDown Live tour, while beating Raw and making over $5 million in the last 11 shows. Now I know to some that doesn't equate to a standing room only crowd of 150 people paying $8 in an armory somewhere. But in the big boy world, that's called putting asses in seats. So enjoy your flips, dives, and 20 super kicks per match. To each of their own. I will go dive back into my 13th paddle run and get ready to flip when my bank statement comes this month. Headlock. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's a internet super kick. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Randy's just... Oh, and then gold, a picture of Goldust, and it says, Me watching Randy Orton's Twitter feed. <laughs> And then we also had Eric Bischoff. I haven't read this yet. I'm glad Randy put out that half-ass <laughs> apology. Okay, yeah, because I was saying I hate apologies, but that wasn't an apology. <laughs> so Eric Bischoff said, oh, God, this is long. TLDR. Sorry. What, what does that mean? Too long getting read. Oh, Okay. Drawing more money, what does that mean anymore? I like Randy a lot. I have a ton of respect for him. Uh, Randy has the luxury of having a very successful career. It wasn't intentional, but WWE is a monopoly. WWE makes a lot of money, and as a result, so does Randy. He doesn't have to change his style because he has the privilege of working for a company. I was able to pay Randy a lot of money. He doesn't have to make his living on the indie circuit. All he has to do is stay on the treadmill. I don't know that that's true. No, it kind of, I mean, yeah, that makes sense too. I don't know. Two per, it's like the music industry where 2% of the people make 98% of the money. I mean, that's so is he an asshole because of that though? Like, do we discredit Randy Orton because of that? No, he's I don't an think asshole so. because of what he said. Like... And it's not an asshole because he makes money. He's uh, also a heel. He's, he's a not a heel right now. He's a perpetual heel. In real life, he's a heel. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. And then heels are assholes. But, I mean, I don't really have a problem with what he said. I mean, this is very much in the same vein of, you know, if anybody watches Kind of Funny... When Colin Moriarty said, ah, a day without a woman, hashtag, you know, peace and quiet, whatever that was, people yeah. freaked out on him. This is not, like, out of character for Randy Orton. Right. It's like it wasn't out of character for Colin. It's not that big of a deal, because it's a joke. Right. And I did see that Colin guy, apparently, he, I, I think... Either you posted or commented on it. He framed that picture of yes. the comment and put it in his new house. Well, he ended up getting kicked out of his company and <laughs> all these terrible things. And then he ended up going on the fucking Joe Rogan podcast and a bunch of other prominent podcasts. And now he has, like, the biggest Patreon. And so it's like, that tweet that was nothing, so yeah. fucking insignificant. Yeah, I mean, it was sort of funny. Created it. kind of funny, if you will. It was a fucking Roseanne joke. Was <laughs> Yeah, think about it. Like, like how many times has, has John Goodman's character said that? How many times has uh, Al Bundy? Al Bundy, thank you. Yeah. How many times the have they made that club. joke? Yeah, it's yeah. not even a good joke. But you can't do it now. It's Randy's joke was an okay joke. Like it was just a truthful, yeah, kind of tirade. It wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, just some people took it too serious. I guess. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna. I think we're gonna talk a bit more about this when Chris is on. Yeah, let's ask him. Cause he messaged me about it. I'm like, shut up, save for podcast. <laughs> yeah, he's a dive guy, right? He is a dive guy. So let's find out from a dive guy. My yeah. ass isn't diving through nothing. I wouldn't either. I well, I I did a swanton bomb a couple times. Yeah, I'm not. Which was scary, and I did it into a ring. I'm not doing that again. No oh, thanks. I don't. Also, it wasn't a swan ton. I think it's a centon. Probably Mine wasn't centon. nearly as elegant. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, speaking of YouTube stuff, 
What culture pro wrestling has canceled their loaded show because of YouTube's ad policy? And this they, is bad. Did, did they cancel the it being live or just the whole show? Let's see here. Now that their free weekly loaded show was going to make a return in June, that's no longer the case. So they're not going to be regularly uh, making the show anymore. They're still going to be doing the Pro Wrestling World Cup. Um, they're still going to be doing a few more shows. Effective immediately are June 9th, 16th, 23rd, 3rd, 14th, 28th, 4th, 11th, and 18th shows have been pulled from our events page. Refunds will be issued automatically. So all those shows are canceled. What? I think they're now going to be doing every couple of months or something like that. Doing shows. But, uh, yeah, this is really unfortunate. Um, the, uh, the World Cup that we watched with Alberto Del Rio and Rey Mysterio got well over a million views, and they made $43. I mean, yeah, that sucks, but, I mean, if you've already had those shows lined up, it kind of sucks to pull them all. And I, I think that many shows, they were going to lose a shitload of money. Well, yeah, but... I think their, ch their tickets are pretty cheap. They make their money from YouTube. Primarily. Very possible, but you also have to think of the fans, though. You also have to think of your employees first. Yeah. If those shows were to put them out of business, which very well could have, because I'm pretty sure there is a dramatic uh, monetary value change from $40 to oh, whatever they were making before. Oh, I'm sure. They made a whole video. They're not doing this. They're not happy about this. Well, I hope not. This sucks. Yeah. Because they're, they're on a roll right now. And it, well, yeah, I just found out about them and I was excited, especially about the World Cup. Yeah. But I think it's just them, they're pulling back a little bit, saying we got to be, we got to be more patient, more wise about this. Now that YouTube's fucked them. Because th we've talked about this on a podcast before. Wrestling as a whole is considered to be advertiser unfriendly. And right. you can't make money from it. Our, our podcast, I'm sure, because of the keywords I use, will never be able to make money off of this on YouTube. Ever. Unless they change this ad policy. Right. Which so, doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, it's just wrestling. The umbrella of wrestling cannot be... There's a lot of wrestling YouTubers that are really good. Like Wrestling with Regret, have you ever seen him? I think so. He it's makes some good right. stuff. He makes very entertaining stuff. I don't know what's going to happen to his channel. Uh -huh. I think he is primarily a... It's like a... I don't know what you'd call him. Because he doesn't make like commentary stuff. He just makes goofy ass videos. Right. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to his channel. That's scary. That's sad put all those eggs in the, to this one basket that's yeah. solid and then all of a sudden they just pull the sheet out from under you just because you like wrestling. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. Oh, do you know if they did that to anything else? Uh, not that I know of. Just generally advertise. Oh, well, yes. Anyone who talks about the news. Anyone who talks about like violent things in the news. Okay. Not showing them. Right. Talking about them. Showing them will definitely get you in trouble if you, like Philip DeFranco says, you know, there's a shooting in Texas or whatever, mm -hmm. he is automatically advertiser unfriendly. Huh. Just by reporting on it. That That's really stupid to me. Yeah. So I hope WCPW, they get their, you know, they, they get something figured out. I can, at least they're giving refunds. Yeah. That's going to kill them. Yeah. I've got to think that... Yeah, just think about that. The refunds, them losing all that money is a safer financially than doing these shows. Right. That's fucking crazy. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That they're just giving back. Sorry, what were you going to say? I just have to think that, you know... I don't know how long that YouTube can go with this. There's other video services... Yeah. They're going to start cutting advertising money. This is why Rooster Teeth has Rooster Teeth first. Why What Culture has their premium subscription. Why 
other people are getting their own premium stuff. Oh, I hope this doesn't benefit YouTube Red. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Because when YouTube Red came out, I was furious. I was like, this is the worst. Really? I don't think it affected me at all. It's just an option. Yeah. Yeah. And most if, if, if. Okay, so this is the screwy thing about YouTube Red. If we could make money off of it, YouTube Red is what we would do for uh, our channel. Right. Because we would pay nine ninety nine, and people could then put... Oh, no, if people pay for YouTube Red, they could then, you know, close their phone, put it in their pocket, listen to our podcast on YouTube. Right. We would then make money from that YouTube Red revenue, but only if we also pay for the nine ninety nine. You cannot get that revenue unless you also have a YouTube Red subscription, which is kind of weird. Eh, it kind of makes sense. Um, but if that's the case, it can't be the case, then what culture would be okay? Right. Yeah. So no, I, I I would have to assume YouTube Red also, you don't get the money from it. Huh. I don't know. Very weird. But this is why what culture is kind of toying with uh, paid content. They right. have one video up that's like ten things WWE don't, doesn't want you to remember about CM Punk. Yeah. It's ninety nine cents. I bought it. It was a good video. Yeah. I'll pay for stuff like that every once in a while, especially if YouTube's fucking them. Yeah, but then you're not going to watch as many. That's, I can sit there and... Well, what culture, they only want to do very higher-end videos for that. Yeah, but eventually, the the higher-end videos, they're still going to have, you know, 50, 100 of them at some time, at some point, and you're going to want to sit there and binge-watch them. So hopefully, the older ones get on, they, you know, stop charging for yeah. the older ones. Or sure, I gotcha. Like I said, they're toying with the idea. Yeah. I think they're one of the first ones to really do this. At least one of the first ones I pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah, because this is shitty. Yeah, they have to do something. Like, well, I guess we're going to start digging around with this service now. Yeah. I almost switched to Vimeo. Yeah. I mean, some people are. It's a weird situation. Yeah. So, uh, the highlight of this weekend has been NXT TakeOver Chicago. Hands down. Um... I was going to watch this with you Sunday before the show, um, but I decided, you know, well, we could probably watch something else. You had already watched it. I'll go ahead and watch it. This is at, like, 1 in the morning because I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I watched it live. The first match was Roderick Strong and Eric Young, and that was such a good match. That was such an interesting start with Roddy attacking Sanity the way you would expect Sanity to attack Roddy. Yeah. That That was pretty cool. Yeah, he came out of the crowd. Yeah, yeah, something. Or from under the rain. He was somewhere. Yeah, he was somewhere. He came out of nowhere. Yeah, he definitely pulled a Randy Orton and came out of nowhere. Unlike the main event of Backlash that he came out of nowhere. Yeah. Right coming. But uh, he kicked the shit out of Eric Young, and he hit his big suplex backbreaker. Yeah, that thing is vicious. I don't remember if he's used that on NXT before. I don't think so. Because it's such a nasty looking move. Oh my god. But, uh, and they even called him the Messiah of the Backbreaker, which again, I don't know if they've done yet. I thought they have, but maybe not. This NXT show is. I've been a little lukewarm on NXT lately. Mm hmm. I really want to go back and watch more of it. Yeah. Um, god, that was such a good match. I, I really hope Roddy is like the next big NXT guy. NXT is usually the first on my rotation yeah. to get caught up for the week. Roderick Strong is like, he's so good. Yeah. He's always been so good. He really has, yeah. And, uh. Made me very, 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 very happy to see him go to NXT. Yeah. I was surprised to see him on NXT in a good way. Yeah. And, uh. He I'm needs surprised. new entrance music, though. I can't even remember what it it's is. It's like some piano thing. And then, like, music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I can't remember it... It's real to. soft. Yeah. It's just music, so one of my favorite things about wrestling, so... Yeah. Sandy had a great one. Oh, my God, oh, yes. Sandy had a great entrance. Yes. Creepy as hell. I love Sandy. They're so good. Um, yeah, their entrance reminds me of, uh, of Primus. Oh, the band? Yeah. In what way? I'm not too familiar with Primus. Uh, just 
Every, weird? Um, there's a lot of NXT musics that remind me very closely of another song. Uh, that one, and not I'm not saying they sound exactly the same, but Sanities reminds me of My Name is Bud by Primus. Okay. And if you listen to them one after the other, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of see the similarities. Um, I hate to say this, but Nakamura's song, uh, my fiance pointed out oh, that God. it's it is the one of the songs from Home that Rihanna sings. <laughs> what is Home? Uh, it's a kids movie okay. with uh, Jim Parsons in it. It's it's a really good kids movie. But yeah, I was playing it. and She started singing, and I was like, "What the hell are you singing?" And she's like, "That's not this song." I was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> Nakamura's intro music. Damn. And then, like, Asuka's song, it reminds me... I can't think of the song it reminds me of, but it definitely reminds me of a different song. Uh, yeah, there's just a couple that are, like, eerily similar. Also, fourth highlight from Backlash was Nakamura coming out and Riley going, Nakamura! Yes. Not even, like, you just asked her, like, who is that? And she went, uh... Nakamura! Yeah. <laughs> with my three year old amazing. When my three year old daughter starts chanting for Nakamura. Yeah. And first thing she did though was as soon as she realized we had wrestling on. Right. I think she saw uh I think the Finn Balor one was still on. Um and she saw a clip of wrestling. She just turns around and goes, Oh no's gonna kill Yeah, she you. did that later too, just randomly. Yeah. Oh yeah, she was like walking towards me too and I was like, Oh yeah. no <laughs> She's about to give you a rolling elbow. Yeah. She'll do it. Oh jeez. Really. Speaking of rolling elbows, uh, I I just realized I use that transition too much. <laughs> speaking of, I'm sorry. Well, speaking of, let's get there. transitions. <laughs> speaking of speaking great transitions, of. Uh, Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate. So for me, I watched the Roderick Strong match and I really enjoyed it. Right. I leaned in for this match. Yes. I got real excited. I don't know either of these guys that well. This match was that waitress from IHOP. Her name is Eileen. I leaned right in. The fun legged waitress at IHOP. Anybody leave? Leaned right in for this match because this match stole the show. Yeah, let's gloss over that, <laughs> I, that IHOP comment. What the fuck? Also, Jim Ross came out. I didn't know that was going to happen. That's awesome. Yeah. Nigel and Jim Ross, great freaking team. At, at first, I was like, oh no, are they not getting along? But by the end, they're, even JR was like, I like this guy. Like, I like you too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, the match was incredible. Commentary was incredible. So now JR is, from what I understand, the only person to commentate for WCW's, I think it was Starcade, uh, Wrestle Kingdom, TakeOver, WrestleMania. I think there was another one I saw on the list too. But I was like, oh, yeah, he's he's done and all take the big over shows. Now. Yeah, I, I think I said takeover. Did I miss takeover? Maybe I don't know. But yeah, takeover WrestleMania. I think it was Starcade, the, Starcade Wrestle Kingdom because it was Wrestle Kingdom Nine. I think there was oh. another one that he called the match for. Um, but yeah, so good old Jr. Hell yeah! But uh, so going into this, I was I really like Pete Dunne's bruiserweight character. Um, I really like this storyline they have of him and Triple H. Triple H telling him, you know, go make a name for yourself. Yeah. That's really awesome to me. Tyler Bate, mega fucking impressive. Oh, yeah. 20-year-old kid. They, they stopped saying he's 19, he's 20 now. Yeah. Well, that's kind of funny. Like, why don't you just say he had a birthday? Um, super impressive kid. Great wrestler. Don't care about his character. No. Could not care less. He just kind of waves. Yeah, it's kind of his thing. He's like a tougher Jack Gallagher. Which, I mean, really... Jack Gallagher's a better character than he does. Yeah. I mean, his character... Yeah, he doesn't have a whole lot to the character. Pete Dunne has more character, for pretty, sure. Pretty great character. Um, I love the bruiser weight. I think that's good. Um, but do we really want to see more of Pete Dunne? Why? Because he's so ugly? My God. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he knows he's ugly. Yeah, and that that helps the character. Yeah. So. But I just, I love the whole, like, fist to the face thing. 
He had the, the belt hanging out of his mouth. Like Yeah, and apparently that's the thing he's done because I guess he holds the title somewhere else right now too. Oh, okay, I saw sure. a picture of him. And none of these guys are like WWE talent. Right. But I saw a picture with that belt hanging from his mouth and the fist on the chin. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, a great match. <laughs> Fucking stole go, the show. Go match. watch that match. Where I'm going to go rewatch it, that's for sure. Yeah, after this we should Yeah. get the girls to watch it. Kim will watch it. Let <laughs> Kelsey doesn't give a shit. And she has to be there. <laughs> but um, actually, I don't really want to talk anymore about that match because it's just so damn good. People have to go watch it. Just watch it. Just some crazy moves I've never seen. I don't really care for pump handle moves. I like this is really impressive. Yeah. Forget what he calls it though. The bitter end. I think so. Sound right. I think that's what they call it. Um. Yeah. Uh, then we had also a massive highlight, Asuka, uh, defeating Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross. I think this was the my least favorite match on the whole show. Uh, Which is saying something, though, because this match was still really good. I guess, no, if I had to pick one, it'd probably be Roddy's. He, his was your least favorite? Just because it had the least impact. Yeah. Yeah, by the end of the match, it's like, all right, Roddy beat Eric. Yeah, because, I mean, Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross really got to, to really show their skills here. Yeah. I mean, Oscar, it was really good. Oscar was a great heel for the whole thing. Yeah. She was a fucking psycho. Oh, yeah. I mean, so was Nikki Cross. Um, Nikki, again, a really creepy entrance for the whole sanity thing. Yeah. Yeah, Nikki Cross is so good. But uh, I want to talk about overused phrases. I think I say that too much. What? But that's okay. Someone's so good. Oh, but, yeah. But when they are, they are. Yeah. Nikki Cross is great. So I think it was Ruby knocked out Nikki, and then Asuka knocked out Ruby, or vice versa. And then Asuka pinned up both of them. Yeah, that was pretty badass. Could you. How do you put Asuka over more? I don't know. You don't. And like I like I mentioned to you though, I think Ember Moon was supposed to win this. Maybe I think that was the original plan. I kind of like that she's not involved in this match because now we're gonna get. I yeah. hope we get like one more pay per view of Oscar dominating, and then Ember takes it. I don't care if Oscar keeps dominating now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I, this heel run just started. Okay, real quick, can we skip back to Backlash to the match we didn't talk about? Oh, the women's match? Did that feel like a, like, did it feel like a women's match, or did it feel kind of like a Divas match? Divas match. Yeah, it was definitely a fucking No one gave a fuck. I hated it. It So bad. And then, like, like I said, it should have been a women's championship match, because it's a pay-per-view. Yeah, it was stupid. The whole fucking thing was stupid. They're all good. Yep, but it just felt like a fucking Divas match. Yeah. Like, you guys are misusing talents again. Yeah. What, like, we just fixed this. Why is it happening again? Oh, my God. What? <laughs> okay. Off of that topic, on to the topic. Me can't... Me not being able to remember words. Okay. Um, wins and losses. What's the word for that? Well, I don't know. Wins and losses. Your win and loss ratio? Your record? Your career? Record. Okay. All right, good day. I, I'm trying to bring something up. I don't know. So I've seen a lot of things about SmackDown. People are saying, well, you need to introduce an Asuka or a character like that to make that roster better. No, you don't. You've already got Charlotte. You've got freaking uh, uh, Becky Lynch. Not to mention you've got Naomi and Carmella could be a great heel. You've got plenty of story there. You don't even... We don't need Asuka. We don't need all these incredible women from NXT for a while. Let them... Because NXT, I think... I don't know if you agree with me or not, but NXT's been a little bit lukewarm lately. Because they lost a lot of big talent. Yeah, yeah, they're heating back up. Well, yeah, we're in a rebuilding phase. Yeah. I think they need to keep 99% of their talent for a while. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Uh, except for uh, Drew McIntyre. What, do you think he could go back to the main roster pretty quickly? Yeah, and I think he's too big of a name to be down in NXT. Yeah, I've heard that too. Because people kind of know him from before. And That's also a good thing for NXT to maybe get some people to come down and watch NXT. Yeah, but it's like... Not come down, come over. Right. Um, but it's like when you see him, like he's going to win. Also, it also means we could see Drew at local shows, so fuck off with that. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> he doesn't really do too much for me. He's pretty awesome. They haven't really let him do much yet. I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, I like him, but if I see him at a local, if I see him at like in Ocala or something, I'm like, oh, cool. He's yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to. His character's going to get better. Not when uh, Cassius shows up and I lose my oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad they had Cassius at least show up in the crowd. Yeah, and Not, at the end. Oh, yeah, with Hideo? Yeah. We'll get to that. Okay, good. I'm glad you um, brought that up. But, yeah, that God, that match with Asuka, Nikki Cross, and Ruby Riot. I didn't know anything about Ruby Riot. Like, she, she's an impressive worker. Nikki Cross is an incredible character, also an impressive worker. I am big fans of both of them now. Oh, yeah. And we saw, actually, we've seen them both on our shows. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah, but there's, I think there's a big difference between, like, what they do at those shows, which is like, oh, that was a good match, and then what they do at, like, TakeOvers. Uh, yeah, yeah except for the one time we saw, like, a practice for the TakeOver. Yeah, was, that was, which was fucking extreme. Awesome. That was insane. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, if this is, if this article is correct, um, Asuka's winning streak, mm -hmm. she's at 150. Matches? Wins in a row. Goldberg's is 173. Oh, please break Goldberg's record. Yeah. Oh, please. Oh, that would be so... Oh, God, he'd hate everyone. Yeah. I, Man, I shouldn't happens. say that. That's actually shitty for me to say. Goldberg might be happy for her. Is that, Maybe. Yeah, I mean, Goldberg's... He is a guy who wants young talent to be put over. But, yeah, it's... That's awesome. Yeah. God, Asuka's so good. Her entrance is still awesome. Yes. She's still entertaining to watch in the ring. Yeah? She's just, she's so good. <laughs> I want to see her just murder on the main roster. I, if, when she does move up, I hope that's what they do. That's what they have to do. I just want it. I think I talked about this in a very early podcast with the Ascension. I wanted the Ascension to be an unbeatable tag team, beat everyone, maybe twice. Right. Maybe Asuka should beat everyone twice or more. And then show up on the main roster with the NXT Championship, the Women's Championship, and just be like, I don't know what to do with this anymore. So I'm going to vacate it, and I want that. The, right. the main roster Women's Championship. Yeah. That would be such a good... So she never even loses the NXT title. Yeah. She just gives it away because she's done with it. She's like, I I can't lose it. Like Marty Squirrel in Ring of Honor. What is it? What do you mean? I don't know this. Oh, he's... Er, like, every time he beats somebody now, he's like, there's no one else left for me to beat. I'm beating everybody. Oh, okay. What do you want me to do? Damn. Join the Bullet Club? Okay. Yeah. Too sweet. <laughs> But yeah, I, that, I just think that would be such a great thing for her character to just never lose. Yeah. And then, shit, have somebody, have Ember Moon also go on a winning streak in NXT and then come up to the main roster and beat her. Yeah. Now you have created a monster and a fantastic new champion. Yeah. You're welcome, guys. Because you're listening. <laughs> I'm pretty decent at this. <laughs> I just... I just think that would be so entertaining. It would be such a great story. Yeah. It's also Definitely. what they could be doing with Charlotte, but they're not. Yeah, I'm glad they're not doing it with Charlotte. She's so good, though. She's good, but... She's mega talented. She's very capable of it. Yeah. I mean, they, okay, here's the problem, though. They're not building anybody. Yeah, exactly. It's just a fucking welcoming committee and Royal Glow fucking fire, fire glow royal, or royal like fuck me in the ass. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> it's called. Fucking Burning Man shit over there. Yeah. Lollapalooza fucking... It is upsetting to see, like, Becky Lynch's awesome entrance, Naomi's awesome entrance, 
Carmella's awesome entrance, and all these awesome women, and then it's just a throwaway, boring ass match where they get a couple little spots in. Yeah. That's fine for SmackDown. That's not fine for a pay per view. Yeah. God, it was just so. Fuck, stop talking about this pay per view. Let's get to a good match. Okay. Hideo Itami versus Bobby Roode. Oh. I wanted Hideo to win a little bit. And the more this match went on, the more I realized how much I'm in love with Bobby Roode. I wanted Hideo to win, but I didn't want Bobby Roode to lose. <laughs> because if, okay. he, if he did, I would hate Bobby Roode more than I do now. Yeah. Because I don't think he's anything if he's not a champion. Kind of like Cena? Yeah. Just kinda... Cena definitely benefits from having a championship. Yeah. Because the whole champ is here thing. Yeah. And Bobby Roode just walking around in a suit. And, it's just like, and a big gold belt on her shoulder, yeah. Yeah, but if he doesn't have the big gold belt, then you're just a pretentious douchebag without a championship. I yeah. mean, with a championship, you know, it's okay. You can do that. Yeah. But without one, it's like, uh, who the fuck are you? You know. So I really... I think Unless you're a violent gentleman. Oh, that's then, right. <laughs> then that's okay. I think Hideo could go to the main roster. I feel like he's done everything he could do in NXT. Really? I think he's plateaued. I just think like he's still a good worker, but it's just like, all right, today again. And he started doing the GTS, which is cool. Yeah. But, so the the match was really, really great. Bobby Roode busted his shoulder, but he still managed to hit his Impaler DDT. And then he escaped the GTS and then hit two Impaler DDTs. That was fucking awesome just rolled one into the other that was and the second one he nailed sold the living fuck out yeah like he was damn near vertical when he took that that was so cool so it was so good Bobby Roode retained um I that could that match could not have gone better what a great story of both those guys getting injured yeah um Bobby Roode overcoming the injury hitting his finished twice yeah on the bad shoulder put him over like none other oh yeah I don't know that it did a lot for Hideo I think it's I think it's pulling Hideo into a storyline yes and after the match uh they they had a video on YouTube he went back to the locker room and it was Cassius Oni Lorcan was Pat Patterson it wasn't Pat Patterson back there I don't know was it Hideo Oni? Oni, or was it, uh... I thought it was Oni Lorcan. The no-fly zone guy. Who's the no-fly zone guy? Oh, no, no, I don't think it was him. Okay. I thought it was Oni Lorcan, and it was somebody else. Hideo lost his shit on them. Yeah. I thought he was gonna fight Cassius. Yeah, and I think Cassius, you later on, in the... Because that was behind the curtain, I think. And later on in the locker room, like Cassius gets up in his face and tells him he needs to stop. Yeah, or something. So I wonder if I didn't see the behind the curtain thing because I'm talking about the there locker were, room. There were two different things. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the locker room thing. Yeah, because I think he goes back and he starts cursing. They bleeped it out, and Cassius got in his face. Yeah, yeah, because there was something before that that I think okay. was actually on the show. Oh, okay. And then Cassius was also involved in both of them. Yeah, I... Oh, God, I do want to catch this versus Hideo now. Yeah, I think... Now that Hideo has been labeled as a top guy, a top contender for the yeah. championship, that just brings Cassius up now. Yeah, because didn't... Uh, isn't there something on Twitter or something from Cassius about Hideo? I don't know. I thought you had that pulled up. You no. You said you were talking about it. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. But um, I think Cassius, for me is the only person on the roster, depending on what they do with Tommaso and Johnny, that should beat Bobby for the championship. And then Bobby should go to the main roster. How do you spell Hideo? H-I-D-E-O. Hideo. Um, but I would love to see Cassius versus Bobby Roode. I still think Cassius ought to lose some weight. I know I'm a jerk saying that. I'm also losing weight, though. 
Uh, I, I think he is. Yeah. Like, from Didn't we say, I think I said on one of the shows we just watched, like, did he lose the weight? Yeah, from the time I saw him in Crystal River, like, two or three months ago, to the time we just saw him when he was in his old school Orlando Magic mm-hmm. gear, right? like, it looks like he had lost quite a bit. Some guys, like a, like a Dusty Rhodes or like a Kevin Owens, it benefits. For, right. ca- for Cash's style, I don't think it benefits him at all. I don't even think he doesn't need to be a Roderick Strong or an Austin Aries. He just needs to and not be obvious. Yeah, and um, I mean, he was in great shape at one point. At a lot of points. At yeah. most of his career, I think. Not sure what happened. Did you find the uh, the Cassius Hideo tweet? Uh, yeah, Cassius tweets. Are you done throwing tantrums now at Hideo Itami? Oh, shit. All right, so that's probably happening. Um, I think we'll find out maybe Wednesday. Probably not. That'll probably be for the next tapings. But this Unless Wednesday, they've already planned on that. And they've got yeah. Set. This Wednesday we're getting um, the debut of uh, Aleister Black in Chicago. Something like that. I don't fucking get it. That was a really weird wording. Yeah. First time he's ever wrestled in Chicago, which is unlikely. Yeah. No one. Well, no, because Aleister Black's first time. Oh, Chicago. sure, but that's not that big a deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I don't know why they made it a big deal. But it's like saying he would have been Cassius Ono's first time in yeah. Chicago. It's also probably it's going to be Velveteen Dream's first time in Chicago. Who we've seen. He's debuted already. I guess I didn't see it. But I'm I'm really interested in that character. It seems like, like it's going to be a fun character. It's I've seen him live. It's not that. I just think it'd be really funny for that show for everyone that comes out if they're like making his Chicago debut, Roderick Strong. Like, well, Roderick Strong has wrestled there, not in NXT. No, but Roderick Strong. I'm just following the dumbass logic. No, I'm saying like Cassius Ono, because only in Cassius, only in NXT is he oh, Cassius Ono. Oh, well, Roddy was on the pay per view. That was a bad example. No, no, I I know what you're saying though, but Roderick Strong was his name before. Yeah. So Roderick Strong has been in Chicago. Cassius Ono, oh Chris Hero has been in Chicago. Yeah. Cassius Ono, oh not so much. It's just, it's just such it's a dumb, dumb logic. It's they, dumb. They're, it's a, they're trying to make it a big deal, and we're going, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's not a big deal to us because we know better. All you got to do is say Alistair Black was wrestling. Yeah. And then you, you, I'm, <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah. Now we're just talking about how awkward you are. <laughs> well, Alistair Black shirt sure came out. And I'm gonna buy it, and I don't. And I'm gonna probably gonna pay full retail. <laughs> and it's a white shirt, and I don't even wear white t-shirts. No, you don't. So I'm really hoping there's a black version that comes out. I have a white um, Shinsuke Nakamura shirt. I think that might be one of the only white shirts I own. I don't think I've seen that one. Probably not. Um. So then the main event. Uh, was Authors of Pain defeating oh, DIY. Yeah, well, what do you think about, or what did you think, because I think we know now, but what did you think about the tag team match being the main event, not the title match, the main title match? Do you think that was a little weird? Uh, I think it made sense because of the ladders, and because of the of the final finish that well, we get to. Well, it makes sense now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, of course I was like, alright, maybe because of the ladders, but... I've always felt like they should put the tag team in the singles championships at the same level. They should. But they don't. But they don't. But I feel like, in my mind, they are at the same level. So, for me, it wasn't a bad bad thing at all. I don't, no, I'm not saying it was bad. It's just confusing. I love that both, the, all four of these guys deserve it. Five of these guys, if you, choose, if you include Paul Allery. Yeah. They 100% deserve it right now. That, that was a great match. And I, I think this is the first time I've ever said that about all these. Uh, no, they had a good match. I probably hated it. <laughs> they they just did something that was really good. I think it was the last match they had with, uh... It was the one with, like, them and DIY and the Revival, and... It was real where they all ganged up on Authors of Pain. Uh... That was really good. That may have been, like, a number one contenders thing. That was at a takeover in yeah. 99%, percent sure. That was a great match. Um, no, uh, also speaking had, of the revival, when I was watching World of Worlds, someone had mm-hmm. a sign that said "Revival Who." 
Like, is there a way right now? I got it right now. What a crappy sign. <laughs> um, I really, really enjoyed this match. I Question, do you think Paul Ellering, like, being the AOP, these are young guys. They're getting to be experienced guys. Does Paul tell them spots, do you think? Like, does he, like, walk over to a guy like, okay, the other one's getting in the ring, you need to get in the ring now. I don't think that's something we should discuss on the podcast. No? No, not at all. Too much behind the scenes? Yeah, that's all we're talking <laughs> about here. I guess it was just a thought that I had. I was like, oh, I wonder if managers do that. Maybe. Okay, oh. I'll stop. <laughs> so, uh, that they, they had a great match. There's a lot of big, awesome ladder spots. There was also a big, awesome ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which had some great spots. Yeah. That ladder was like 80 feet tall. I could use that for work, you know. Yeah. You still got it. Yep, still got it. Ladder's still here. Yep, the ladder from the what show. Um, God, there were so many good spots. At the When DIY had the belt and they knocked the ladder over and DIY hung from the... I thought they were going to take him. That would have been kind of cool. Um, but the fact that that turned into the... Uh, Super, uh, collider. Super Collider, which is a great fucking finisher name. Yeah. I think it would have been cool if they would have took the titles and still done it. Oh, and then maybe the belts fall into AOP's hands? No, I mean, the oh, uh, they DIY. still the DIY still win, okay. but they still get Super Collider and just knock the fuck out. Yeah, like they've actually done a few times to people. Yeah. Which I, I, I noticed when they did it, it's like they'll hit like they hit like Gargano's head on like Ciampa's like shoulders. They do it slightly different now. Yeah. They also don't power bomb them in virtually the same spot of the ring anymore. Yeah, that was always a bad. That, idea. I think that was also where the heads collided. Yeah, there, where they super collided. I feel like my teeth right now. Yeah. Oh, not not good. Um, but that that goes back to them being like younger guys. Yeah. Um, after the match, uh, Johnny and Tommaso were standing at the top of the ramp. Big applause, as always. These guys love each other. Did you notice the logo came on? Did it? Yeah, like, end of the show. And then apparently Tommaso said to Johnny, this isn't our moment, this is my moment. And then slammed his face into the fucking television monitor thing. Yep. Holy shit. I'm not surprised. It didn't surprise me. It needed to happen. I enjoyed it. It isn't bad that I enjoyed it. No. I enjoyed every second of it. Cause I, I like Ciampa better than I like Gargano. I'm a long time Tommaso Ciampa fan. The Sicilian oh. psychopath is amazing. So, I'm, yeah, as I was watching it, I was like, <laughs> yes. But he, uh, he did his running knee strike, and then he took his knee pad off and did it again. Yeah. And then he did, what is it? Is that an air raid siren that he did? I know. Uh. Seamus calls it white noise, I think. How did he go again? Um, he's like hanging. His legs are up here, and then he's got his head hooked down here. Oh, yeah. I think that's an air raid siren. I think so. He, uh, he made it look like he was going to put him through the announce table. Instead, they jumped the fuck off the announce table and went yeah. through a bunch of other tables. Hell, yeah. Oh, my that God. so cool. And then Tommaso... Climbed back up, sat on top of the announce table, and just chilled out. And just watched him. Watched him get carted out on a stretcher. Even as a Tommaso Ciampa fan, that was a little bit disturbing. To yeah. just He just sitting there. Yeah. It was real creepy. Real unsettling. Unsettling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing that was missing was he, he normally does like the... the fake gun thing to the head like uh, Finn Balor does. Yeah. Tommaso also does that. But um, but I don't know if Balor's even allowed to do that right now. Dude, he did it in the documentary. There was a bunch of shots of him doing the double guns. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, okay. even like newer WWE things. Oh, okay. But um, it makes sense why they don't let him do that. That one's pretty pretty out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Candice LeRae who I think you told me they were married. I didn't know that. Candice Larry and Johnny Gargano are married. Yeah. That, God damn, that's a power couple. Yes. Um, she posted on Twitter, maybe? I think it was Twitter. Um, 
She said, Johnny is hurting physically, mentally, and we're drained emotionally. It was a long night, and we appreciate everyone's support and kind words. It's going to be a process, but my husband is resilient, and he'll be back stronger than a ever ASAP. We will try to keep you updated on his progress. For now, this is all I can say on the matter. I have no words for the absolutely selfish acts of this person we believe was a part of our family. Thank you all for your love and support. I hope Candace comes back with Johnny. That would yeah. make me so happy. Oh, Candace LeRae beats Asuka. Talk about a you deserve it chant. Yeah. Build her up for a while. She's so good. She's really good. She's really good. Um, I'm a big, big, big fan of hers. I don't know if she's going to be able to keep her finisher. What's her finisher? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, the ball box. Oh, that! <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're, nope. they're going to let her keep that. I don't think they're going to let a wrestler bend, anyways. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a great... This is uh, one of um, that guy that we found on YouTube. This is one of his documentaries about intergender wrestling. Yeah, that's about her. Is it? Excellent. I need to watch she, that. I think she has her own as well. Yeah, I think she does. So does Johnny. And I think they have one together. I think the intergender Probably. one is those two together. Okay. But, um, yeah, I want... I'm so excited for a Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa feud. The matches they had at the Cruiserweight. It they, yeah, we got a taste of that at the uh, Cruiserweight. Yeah. Cruiser, so. uh, I don't think they need to kill each other like they did then. I think they could kill each other over a, like, five-match period. I think they're going to kill each other every single time. Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited for this. Because when you ha like in that situation, like you put on the best matches with the people you know the best. Sure. So those two guys are probably going to kill each other every single time they have a match. I now want because Tommaso and Johnny have been very generic characters up to this point. They've been the indie guys. They we can do anything, indie yeah. guys. Oh yeah. That's their gimmick. Yeah, it is boring. The only reason it's good is because they're good wrestlers. That's really right. it. Also, I mean, the DIY, you know, do it yourself because no one's going to do it for you. That's a big inspiration for this podcast, our website, and everything. Yeah. Um, I, I'm happy that they're splitting up, though. Because I want the Sicilian psychopath, Tommaso Ciampa, and I want a fucking pissed-off Johnny Gargano. Johnny needs yeah. to evolve now. I might like Johnny Gargano. Yeah, he needs to evolve now. Maybe, like, cut his hair and start using harsher moves. And, God, this feud could be so good. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. If they treat it right. Which, them being the main event and make, screwing up the logo and then having to take the logo down and then this yeah. thing, ha like, obviously someone in NXT is invested in these two guys. Yeah, Triple H. Yeah. My favorite meme I've seen throughout the whole weekend, it's a picture of Triple H and Vince McMahon from back in the day. Triple yeah. H has his arm around Vince and he's pointing to him and it just says, he booked this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that came out after Backlash. Okay. I was like, oh, gotcha. <laughs> I think things are starting to get better. Things have been starting to get better. Backlash was a setback. NXT was five steps forward for NXT. Oh, yeah. Um, they're just, uh, they're all dancing around each other. I think NXT's always been on top. And that's just mm. me. Yeah, yes and no. WrestleMania was damn good this year. Yeah, it was good. They also have that high production value. Right. Which helps a lot. I don't think, and I think that's what I like about NXT as well, is it doesn't matter. It doesn't, but they still have pretty cool entrances. And yeah, they, they have enough. Mm -hmm. They don't need a Especially when they do takeovers from the big arenas. Yeah. Um, I think that that's an excellent thing that they're doing now because the guys like AOP that aren't... I don't think AOP were indie guys. I think they may have been just plucked from obscurity and made into these big monsters. Paid to go to the NXT. Thing. Yeah. Uh oh, um, There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. No, because if, if that's the school you start at, congratulations. Because if you don't like people like that, then I guess you hate Alexa Bliss. 
Yeah, she's not an indie wrestler. She's no. she's a model, I think. Uh, she was a fitness bodybuilder. Bodybuilder, I believe. And she was picked for NXT. Uh, so yeah, she's a. Well, well, I think you pay to go to NXT. I think it's a school. Yes, but they also just recruit people. Right. Um. So right. yeah, if you think that you're shit, if you're not on the indie circuit, then you think Alexa Bliss is shit. Right. You think Enzo Amore is shit. People might think that you're wrong, <laughs> but Enzo Amore is not shit. Right. Alexa Bliss is definitely not shit. Right. Yeah, I mean, I like it better. AOP is starting to not be shit. And I think this was a fluke. <laughs> okay. I don't think they're going to have any more good matches. Dude, I hope they don't have a match with Heavy Machinery. Really? I think it's going to be boring as fuck. I kind of like Heavy Machinery. Against AOP, though? Against anybody. They're funny. They're funny as hell. That doesn't help a match, though. Yeah, but... What was it that, like, we had, like, 40 minutes left in a pay-per-view? It was Roman Reigns and somebody else boring. And we were both, like, with these guys? It was recently. Yeah. I don't know. It was Reigns and somebody else that was fairly boring. But, yeah, that to me, that's what that is. Like, eh, this feud? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Heavy Machinery will impress me. They well, better. Like I said, they're funny. So. Sure. I hope they get to, because they were funny live, so I hope they get to bring that to the show. Sure. Because, the, <laughs> only time will tell? Because you can't really, you don't really want to take them serious, just because, I mean, they're big guys, but they're still goofy as fuck looking. Who, what are the other tag teams in NXT right now? It's Heavy Machinery, AOP, oh, Rick Moss and Tino Sabatelli. Oh, yeah. Um, shit, make those two tag team champions. They could use it. Also, I think AOP yeah. could just keep the championship for a long time. And be, you know, stuck together guys like Riddick and Tino. I can see those two going separate ways. but Riddick and Tino? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, they will. The AOP guys, they look identical. Uh, they're they're a life, life, lifetime tag team unless things change dramatically. Yeah. But I think that's okay for younger talent like them. Right. So, I don't know. Oh, look at the Hardys. They were a tag team forever. Edge and Christian forever. Edge and Christian looks a lot alike. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, it could work. But it just sucks that, you know, they don't have the option of it not working, really. Or one of them can move on. Sure. But probably not. Yeah. They're I mean, they can always go back to the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Token Razor. They're, one of them's going to have to learn English. No. He no. just always have a manager. Yeah, that's true. I would like to see them with Paul Heyman. Yeah. Then they'd be exciting. That guy just don't care, care about Paul and Larry that much. I hate their name. Oh, the authors, authors of Pain? Yeah. They're not authors. Look at them. AOP sounds better than Authors of Pain. Yeah. That's why I usually call them AOP. Because then they, I don't think about them being authors. What are they writing on? The impression I get is that they're not authors. Paul is. But he needs the book. He has the book. Does he? I've never yeah. seen the whole book. Uh, during the, the promos for that match, he was saying it's the final chapter and close the book. Well, he, he needs to have a book all the goddamn time. Yeah. Other than a promo. Like Truth Martini? I was, yeah, I was just about to bring him up. Love just like that. Truth Martini. But I just saw him on something, too. He's so good. I think when I went back to watch... Uh, Truth Martini is another one they need in NXT. Ring of Honor show. You gotta yeah. go back and watch some of the stuff with him in the House of Truth with Roderick Strong and Michael Elgin. Yeah. Very, very good. That's what I saw it on. What was I looking at? He's a great talker. Oh, I think I was trying to show you the uh, Elgin Cole feud and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I, we couldn't really find a lot from that. Yeah. That couldn't. was very, very personal. Where they had Elgin tied up on the ropes and. Cole just kept eating his wife. Yeah. That's fucked up, Cole. <laughs> uh, Adam Cole, also not at NXT. Yeah, I'm... Also not at Backlash. I'm not surprised he wasn't at Backlash, yeah. but... Uh, Would have made the show better. Yeah. yeah. But, uh... Wouldn't take much. Yeah. So, I think next week, hopefully, we'll have Chris on. Very soon, at the very least. Chris Braddock will be back. Uh, we're going to stop promising guests. <laughs> but Chris will be back on. Yeah, because that's his ladder right behind you. He's oh, yeah, he's going to come back for that eventually. 
But uh, he's also very local. Yeah, he isn't so local. Uh, yeah, they're both actually in Orlando today, I think. So should have had them record a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Neither one of them know each other, right? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm waiting for them to meet because Bruce yeah. has ideas. And Chris... how great would that be if we had like the podcast did well enough that we could rent a space and a microphone and just have them both show up and record something? <laughs> that would be great. That'd be... Maybe that's what we should do. We should just like start this podcast and somehow sneak away. <laughs> just let them do record. Yes. You mean you have a vacation podcast? <laughs> Welcome to Watch Wrestling. This is uh, Jang of Vest and Realm Hunter and Brian, Brian Van Peacock from fucking Maui. <laughs> and uh, Brooks and Chris are still recording. Yeah. It's been uh, 45 hours since they started. And I think they would continue to go. Yeah, and I wanted them to shut up. Call them and told them to Jeez. stop. Which is perfectly fine. But we're going to shut up. Because <laughs> this is the end of the show. I'm done talking. Yeah. I never talk this much. That's true. It's good that we do this. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for joining us, guys. This has been the Future Heels Podcast. You can find it on iTunes, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, on Cast Crunch. Um, you can also find it on the Few True Villains website. That's F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. You can find me on Twitter at Best of the Realm. I'm on YouTube, Best of the Realm. Twitch.tv slash Best of the Realm. Brian, you're on the social medias. I'm on Twitter at Brian25, which uh, I'll try to start using again more often. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, you're off and on. Yeah. Instagram, Brian11138. 11, 11, and uh, YouTube, Nerdy Brian Man, and on the True Future Villains website. Yep, and you can also find me on Facebook. You can find Future Villains on Facebook and Twitter as well. Thank you for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time. Let's stop. <laughs>